Um, the class today is going to be very short. It's just a bit of a background about myself. Um, we'll look at some of the administrative issues around the course, uh, grading and tests and exams. And then we'll just end off with a bit of a brainstorming session about some topics you might want to see covered. Um, I've got a plan for the course already set up, but I don't have to stick to it. I'm pretty open to putting in some new unit operations, interesting separation processes that uh, you might have some interest in. And so at that last session where we're in today's class, you'll have a little handout that you can fill in and uh, we can keep the course a little bit fluid. And then tomorrow, though, we'll start with the with topic um, of just an overview of separation processes, why it's important. I will cover the topics I plan to cover, but if I see in the handout here from the end of today there's an overwhelming interest in a certain area, then I'll uh, rearrange tomorrow's class to accommodate for a bit of that. Okay, so I'm not going to take full credit at all for any of the material in this course. I inherited binders and binders of stuff from Dr. Jim Dixon since the 1980s, so I've got exams and tests and assignments written all in hand and old like Doc Matrix printers from the 80s. So I've got plenty of material to work with. Uh, Dr. Ghosh taught it then uh, after Jim Dixon, and then Santiago taught it most recently um, in the past three years. So I've got my current plan is to stick with the most recent layout from Santiago. Uh, I've readjusted it slightly though. But we're generally going to work with all the material from these good instructors. Uh, Dr. Jim Dixon has put a lot of effort into the membranes and reverse osmosis part of the course. Dr. Ghosh is obviously a very strong interest in bio separation, so some of that comes through into the course. And then Santiago's uh, had some interesting additions to his notes as well. So I'm going to keep all of that and build on top of it a bit. Okay, so just about myself. Um, I'm uh, I originally did my undergraduate year back in South Africa at the University of Cape Town. I finished that up in 99. Actually, Dr. Chris Schwartz was my instructor for process control back then, ended up in 99. Then he, uh, I applied to work uh, for him to do my master's degree in 2000. And our very first meeting with him, he told me I'm leaving and coming to Canada. So I'm like, okay, well, I can find another instructor or I can come to Canada. And I just landed up getting back and I realized, oh, what was the school this is? And so I did my master's here, finished that up in 2002. So, um, so that's my, my educational background. I don't have a PhD, please don't call me a doctor. Dr. Dunn, I'm <laughs> not a Dr. Dunn. Please just call me Kevin. That's what I prefer, all the, all the students call me. Since finishing up in 2002, I've, uh, I started a company with one of the other professors here at Mac. That's why I say at Mac, because here you've got really one of the top engineering schools. You've got really good professors and instructors to work with. So take advantage of that if you're interested in postgraduate studies. Uh, or even just hear your undergraduates, pick their brains. So I, I helped start a company with John McGregor. After 2002, I worked here at the university as a research engineer. I uh, worked with a, a whole bunch of companies on data analysis and statistics, which is what my area it is. And then just most recently, I finished a one-year contract in the pharmaceutical industry in Sasaga. Then Mac hired me in July full-time. So I'm now here, and I'm super excited as an assistant. So I actually do get to be called professor, which is kind of weird for me to be called that. Still kind of getting used to that. So, please, but I prefer Kevin, seriously, <laughs> no professor, no doctor. Um, if you want to speak with me face to face, uh, please come by my office anytime on Tuesday or Thursday afternoons. That's when I'm most free. Uh, the other times I am probably available, but I'm going to be in the middle of uh, courses or meetings with other people. Um, so those are certainly the best times just to drop in. Uh, if you do want to arrange a meeting with me by email, uh, there's my address. And uh, if you need to phone me, I prefer you to call myself rather than my office extension. I barely use that phone. It kind of sits in the corner of my desk. So those are the order of preference to communicate with me face to face after the class or by email, my cell phone, or if you want to, phone me at the university phone. <laughs> okay, so we have a really good teaching assistant this time. Um, Daryl, uh, Daryl, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, I'm Daryl. I know most of you from uh, last year's 3M, I think, where I've seen you guys around the, this summer in the lab. Uh, like I said, I remember my PhD with Todd Moore, uh, biomaterials for drug delivery. Uh, this is my 10th year at McMaster. <laughs> I did my undergrad here at Chem and Bio, uh, graduated in 2008, did my master's here as well. Thought about leaving, but 
I just like the school too much. <laughs> so uh, basically, I'm available uh, at any time via email as long as we can make some sort of arrangement. Um, I won't give you my cell phone number. <laughs> That's all right. Um, but if you send me an email, I should get back to you within 24 hours, probably much sooner than that. The only thing I want to discuss with you guys right now is do you want a designated office hour that you guys can drop in at any time? And if so, when would you like that? Don't care? All right, so we'll just go by email then. Um, I am JG 133, that's my office at least. Um, you can come off. At any time if you'd like, there's no guarantee I'll be there because my lab is on the second floor. But uh, if you send an email, I should be able to raise the time, probably within the day. My only times I'm really busy, for sure, are uh, Thursday afternoons because I work at the falls as well. Um, but other than that, I, I should be available at any time. All right. Good luck this year. Uh, to those uh, in your final year, uh, congratulations. Yeah, so I was really lucky this year to get a whole bunch of good TAs for my courses and I managed to upgrade this class from that awful room back there, T13, to this room, which is a lot better. Um, so I hope it's okay. The only thing that really sucks about this room that I, I don't like is that there's no blackboard. So I'm going to, well, this thing's really crappy, but I'm going to try doing the iPad pen thing or the, 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 this pen thing here to do workout problems so we'll see how that goes if I can't get that working so well. Um, just some other things, administrative issues that you'll cover. I am a video recording this class, as, as most of you know, I try to do that for most of my courses that I teach where it's feasible. Um, so that's that's going at the back. I try to post those within two to three days. Um, some, it's usually more than two days that I get around to, to editing and uploading the video. It takes quite a while. The quality isn't often the best. Sometimes the sound doesn't work out quite well. Or the, you can't see, uh, because the camera's right at the back, you can't see all the detail on slides, but the slides are only where we have to the website. And then also I've got an audio recording going. Now, from what I've seen, how most students use it, the, the videos get downloaded a lot, a lot just before final exams and tests, which is exactly what they're there for. Right? They're there for you to say, well, I remember like in that week Kevin spoke about reverse osmosis, but I didn't quite understand something like in the middle of the class. So you go download the video and you can look for that portion. You revise, revise it from there. Um, if you want to use the videos uh, to uh, sleep in and then watch the videos at home later, that's up to your, your choice. I don't expect you in class, though it's really all that. Professors always like it when their students are in the class, but I don't require it at all. So if you do want to use the videos to, uh, to sleep in a bit, I know it's pretty early in the morning, then, uh, then give it a try, see how it goes. Okay, everything related to the course is going to be on the website. There's no emails, no avenue. Um, that website up there is my main point of contact with you. Any announcements I make regarding projects, delays in assignments, hand-ins, um, anything of that nature gets posted on uh, that website over there. So let's just take a look at it, if this connection works here. So actually, by the way, every time you see like pink writing in the in the in the slides, that those are hyperlinks that you can click on if you're viewing it online. So there's the course website. The part where I'm talking about here is up in the top left is where the announcements are. I'll post uh, any of the the new assignments information. In. This is not working. Okay, we got a new <laughs> new one of these. Uh, so at the top left is where the announcements will be posted. Top right is where the course materials, slides. So today's slides are in fact available over there. I tend to post the slides a day or two in advance. Um, so, so just take a look for that. Important for, for you is the supplementary readings down here. Those are references to textbooks and chapters in the textbooks that uh, to give you a bit more information if you want a bit more that I don't cover in the class, or you want another another opinion or another viewpoint on the material. So please take a look at those. And then I've posted all of Santiago's course notes from last year. So 2011's full PowerPoint slides, or they're available as PDFs actually, are available to you over there. So like I said, I'm going to modify a bit what Santiago did in terms of the order in which I cover it. But those notes might be a good uh, alternative for you to, if you just want another opinion as well. 
The sign ones get posted here on the bottom, bottom left. Uh, the take home exam will be posted there, the course project, which I'll talk about in a minute. Uh, there's a, a midterm that I'll post there after the midterm, the final exam will be posted there after the final exam, and then I'll have some practice questions from previous years for you to give a go. And then on the bottom right is the, uh, the calendar, so <coughs> just, to, just to show you when assignments are due and projects, uh, outlines, and so forth. Any questions on the website? I just want to get a sense from you, how many of you, um, because I don't use Avenue, the reason is mainly because I don't have the flexibility that I'm looking for from Avenue. I've tried to do this sort of layout in Avenue and I don't have always the things I like from it. So, but is there something in Avenue that you use in particular that just, like for example, I'm thinking the um, discussion boards or chat rooms, is that something you guys do use in some of your other courses? Very rarely. Uh, so it, would it, let's say, um, no, yeah, okay, so that's, that's exactly what I'm after. Would you use it, say, for your lab course or um, reactor design? Yeah, you did use it for reactor design for 3K? Yeah. Okay. Um, and that was uh, to interact with the TAs or with Shant or, or to interact with yourselves? Uh, uh, all of them? Okay. okay. So if, if the discussion board is something that you want, I can certainly add that to this website, or I can use the avenue part. Um, I'll, I'll show you how you can feedback that sort of information to me. If there's anything that you think I can do to improve the course, I'll show you in a minute how you can let me know. Um, so you don't have to tell me here across the classroom, you can email me on the call, and I'll show you on the website how to do that. Okay, so let's just talk about the, the texts for this course. There is no official course textbook. You don't have to go to the bookstore and buy anything. But I do recommend the following two references. How many of you already have Jim Coppers' book? Okay, so most of you have that. Now, the, a number of the topics I plan to cover are in this book, but there are a few that are not well covered. So for example, the very first section on, on mechanical separation, sedimentation, and cyclones, they're somewhat covered in here, but not, not very well. Um, so you, you will get by with this book, but you will need something else um, in addition to that. You could just, of course, rely on the course notes as well, but um, if you want something beyond the course notes, Gene Coppers is good. The other one I do recommend is this, this guy by C. De Hen and How many of you have all of this book? This one is super expensive. Um, I guess Gene Coppers is expensive as well, I forget the price. But this one I, I was looking at, because this isn't even my copy house, I guess. I don't even want to buy this. Um, but it is a good one. I was looking through it. I, I may just get it myself. After all, I'm getting paid now to buy this. Okay, so then the other one I do recommend is Perry's. Um, Perry's, you don't certainly don't need to buy it. It is also one of those expensive handbooks. Um, though if you do invest in it, it's something that you will use for for quite some time. They tend to bring out a new version every seven, eight years. So it will be good for uh, for a few years. But right now, from my master's campus, you have access to it electronically. And I highly recommend you print out the chapters related to the course. I will give you the exact chapter numbers for the particular sections. So if we're looking at cyclones, I'll give you the section number for cyclones and you can open up that. Right, that. That resource is incredibly valuable. And then, as I said, I'll post a few others on the website for you to take, um, take your own time for self-directed learning if you want to expand your in uh, horizon. Okay, the other, the other uh, thing just to cover from an admission point of view is I'm trying something new this year. Rather than waiting for course evaluations, um, if at any point you want to give some feedback about how the course is going, mm -hmm. or like I said, maybe you think that discussion boards would be useful to interact with your, with your classmates, and that's something you'd like to see happen or I didn't explain something clearly, or you couldn't get a chance to ask some things in the class because it, it was in a gap, or it didn't seem suitable, or you, you were shy, or whatever the case is, uh, please feel free to, right away, as soon as you have an issue, don't wait, you can do this even on your cell phone, this uh, website works quite well uh, on a mobile device, 
go to that link there, learn learnche.mypass.ca. That's actually the only link you probably need. Uh, so learnche is where I have all my stuff related to chemical engineering. So the first tab over there is all about the courses I'm teaching over the next year. Uh, the next tab is my contact information uh, and where I work. There's a bit about myself over there, there's a bit about my teaching approach. And then that final tab is the one I'm referring to now, is feedbacks and comments. So this form is totally anonymous. If you do put your email address here, though, that's, that's your choice. You don't have to. And then once you're done, you can send, click send there at the bottom, and I'll get that, whatever you wrote there in the box as an email. So it's totally anonymous, and you can give me information back right away. So ask me questions about the part of the course you didn't understand, and then I can take it up in the next class. Because if you have a question, as you know, probably your, your colleagues also have a similar question. Okay. Uh, like Daryl said, he'll reply to you within 24 hours. I try to reply to him within 24 hours. Uh, I am teaching two very big classes this year, 4N and 4M. Uh, so particularly the 4N is incredibly intensive. This class 4N, there's slightly fewer students, but um, I still have a large volume of email to go through. So I tend to have about a, a, a two-day delay sometimes when I get back to you. Uh, so please email Daryl first. You can CC me just so that I'm kept up to date with things. And then finally, um, I do ask that you, I don't enforce it, like I know some instructors, if you don't email from your Mac pass the address, they just ignore it. Um, I really don't care too much, but I will say this. Any email that comes from a MacMaster email gets flagged with a bright red label in my inbox at Gmail, and I take care of it pretty quickly. It gets high on my priority. So if it comes from your Hotmail or Gmail account, um, it, it doesn't get any flagging, and I, I may not see it. It will take longer for me to deal with it. Okay, so let's talk about the part that people are most interested in, usually um, grading. So my approach to grading is the following. I really look for an understanding of the, the concept. So my questions sometimes tend to be um, a little bit more open-ended. Uh, there's a lot of interpretation and discussion to the questions. I don't just have equations and numbers. Uh, so I really want you to think about the topic. For example, if we were looking at a separation process and we have the equations that give a model for say a cycle, then the question might be something derive the, the exit size fraction coming out of the cycle. But then there will be an additional question that says, well now your manager wants to increase the throughput through the cycle by 20%. What can you change to the cyclone's method of operation to achieve that increased throughput? And how will it affect the cut, the cut size coming out? So then it's not just plugging in numbers into equations, it's more, well what is the cyclone doing? And using the equations, make an interpretation of how that change of increased throughput will affect the output. So it's, it's a deeper understanding of what the topic is. It's not like your second and third year courses, which you can tend to get away with just plugging the numbers into a set equation and following a procedure. So I really look for an understanding of the concept, and that you can apply it to new instances. So for example, like that concept of increasing the throughput or what if we wanted to put a different material through the same existing cycle? You don't want to go buy a new one, you want to reuse your existing equipment but apply it to a new process stream. How does that happen? Or what will happen? Um, there may be some creativity that you can apply, especially with separation processes, because there's so many separation processes and how we choose to sequence one unit after the other, there's a lot of freedom that we have there. So there's some creativity in your thinking that you can apply there. And then also some technical accuracy in terms of the numbers and the, and the equations. The breakdown I've settled on is similar to previous years where there will be five assignments of 20% total. Uh, there is a written midterm of 15%. I'll talk about that in a minute. And the final exam was 45%. So in terms of the exam structure, I'll get to that in a moment. There's, a, a, there's also a take-home exam, which some, most of you who've taken my 4C class or 3E um, have an experience with take-home exams, so that shouldn't be new to most of you. But the take-home exam is an opportunity to have more open-ended questions and give you about four or five days to work on some 
some more intensive problems than you would typically have in a sample, in a test or exam situation. And then there's a project with a short presentation to the rest of the class. And I'll, I'll cover that in a minute. Um, and then the usual disclaimer is that there may be some minor adjustments to those allocations, and then I'll use the standard lettering system in the university. Before I move on, any, any, any issues regarding that? Okay, let's just quickly talk about exams. Uh, those are the dates up there. The, the midterm, the room is already booked. It's, it will be here in NBCL. Uh, not in this room, but in one of the other rooms. That's in the evening. Uh, it is optional. If you don't make it, the final uh, portion of that waiting from the midterm gets transferred to the final exam. Um, so I don't care about medical issues or emergencies as such. If you, if you can't make it, you can't make it. If you don't feel prepared to write the midterm, don't write the midterm. Um, but if you do write it, it just spreads the risk of, uh, or it just puts your mind at ease a little bit more as well over the, over the allocation. Yes, there was a question. Yeah. If you write it, then uh, you tell the option then you get to No, if you write it, you write it, and then your allocation is um, as shown. So if you write the midterm, it will be allocated to 15% of your grade. Yeah. yeah, sometimes there's the thing where you can they'll take the higher of the two marks, yeah. No, so if you, it's, a, it's a lottery, I guess. If you write it, you write it, and you get your grade, and it's 15% of your, your grade allocation taken up already. The take-home exam, as I said, is uh, it will be group-based. Um, so all the assignments will be in groups of two. I'll, I'll talk about group work in a minute. Uh, the take-home exam will be in those same groups of two. It's open-ended questions for you guys to work on. And then the final exam is cumulative of all the material with equal weighting on all the topics, even if it was in the midterm and maybe in the final exam game. Um, all my exams and tests in general I have is open notes. You can bring absolutely anything you like, any textbooks you, you want to bring in, any paper-based notes, uh, any calculator in particular. If you want to program any equations in there, please go ahead um, and on your scientific calculator. The only thing I can't have are electronic books, like uh, iPads or tablets, computers. And I really wish I could, because we're going to have a crunch in about four or five years' time where the publishers are not going to be publishing paper books anymore. And I want some ideas from you guys how to handle this. Like, I'd love to have cell phones and tablet computers in my exams and class. Um, but so if you've got any ideas of how to handle that, the collaboration slide that could go with that, um, I'd be interested in that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's on the server. Say you go for room and set up a mass, maybe more than this. Yeah. Like a room like this. You know, the server with Wi Fi is adequate. Go through it in the class of what you need to get. Mm -hmm. How to access the files that are on the server. Right. And then you have the restrictions. You know, like if you can own that server, you know. Well, I can maybe it out. Like, Yeah, I thought of that. The, the only one issue there is um, like we have the campus Wi-Fi signal that, that is really strong, and it's still a, you can't turn it off selectively. No, no, but it, it will still be available. It will still be available. Like you can't enforce that you connect to one Wi-Fi to the other. Also, like when I say ebooks, I want you to be able to use cell phones. Any like you might use your cell phone as your textbook. Like why not? You can have a PDF on it, then you've got your your iPad. Uh, Cell phones, internet, stuff like that. So anyway, it's, it's, I'm, I'm tempted to even have an, uh, an exam where you can use it. If you collaborate with your buddy next to you, a text message, that's fine. Just as long as you credit it. But, um, so anyway, this is some interesting ideas that I'm playing around with and thinking of. So if you, but if you've got any ideas, that, um, please let me know. Okay, so let's talk a bit of, yeah. Um, that's something we may have to work around. I can't change those test booking dates. Um, there, it's, it's impossible to accommodate everyone. So it may be that you just miss your night class that one day. Um, I'm not sure how many of you have taken that course. The other option is Friday night. 
That's the end of the morning too. See you on Thursday night and Friday night. I could do it on a Wednesday perhaps. Do the Wednesday Friday to that point. I didn't realize there were so many night classes going on on uh, campus these days. Okay, so please, please use that form and then I will, uh, by next week I'm going to send one a day to just pick one and we'll just have to exactly take it. Okay, let's talk a bit about the presentation. Uh, there is a, a small report that you will have to hand it. It is small. Um, it's, it's literally no more than 10 pages. I haven't quite decided on the scope of the report yet. Um, and we'll be on a unit operation in that you pick. So you and your, your, your group partners, so it's in groups of two, will pick a separation process that interests you. And the particular scope of the report is still to be decided. So the report may be focusing on how you size and design the unit, or the report may focus on how that unit is operated and started up and shut down. Um, so I haven't quite, quite uh, settled on something just yet. There is a list of unit operations that will be available, and it's first come, first served. Um, so you, you will have an opportunity just to, uh, to pick that unit and if someone else has taken it, you may have to, to resort to something else. But the list is extensive. There's certainly more unit operations than there are groups in the class. So you will have something. And also, of course, if, you, if the, the unit you're interested in is not listed, you can, um, you can add it to the list. The hand-ins, um, I'm moving to only electronic hand-ins. I'm tired of just boxes of papers and binding in my office. So I will only accept documents through Google Docs. Uh, so Google Docs handles tables, equations, um, figures, just perfectly. So you can write your, your report in Word or whatever your uh, word process of choice is. Google Docs are always important. And you will then share your document with myself and the TA. I will grade it electronically, put comments in the Word document, in the Google Doc, and you will be able to get your comments back, which is another advantage. So normally you hand in your end of term report and you never see anything back again other than so this way you'll get, get some feedback on it. I want my mother's paper to take home and carry around with me and throw out to get. Um, you will then uh, present your topic to the class and that topic is examinable. So everyone's presentations, there will be selected portions of it, uh, used in the final exam. So those presentations are quite early on, they're in November. Um, so the, the second last week of November, you'll present to the class, you'll have, give a handout to the class for your presentation, and the material from those handouts will be used in the final exam. Uh, any questions on that so far? I'll, I will clarify more, more on that and give a more detailed write up on the course website. Okay, so let's just talk about group assignments and what I consider as appropriate group work. Um, it's about 40% of the course grade is through group work. And there's a, a number of reasons for that. And the most important is that when you work out, uh, after, when you start working after you leave my master, you will always be working in groups. I've never worked in companies where I've worked alone. Um, it's always been in groups of at least two or more people. So that, that's a very important skill you'll learn in all your courses, but particularly the courses I teach, and very particularly in 4M and 4W. So those two final year courses of group work is, is highly emphasized. So here's what I mean, what I would like to see is group work. Group work is where, let's say we've got two people, they're working on assignments, Sarah and Brad, they do all the questions, both of them. So both Sarah and Brad just roughly work out the questions. This is not the final solution typed up or written out formally. They just do rough notes when they're at home, when they're traveling on the bus, whatever. So you do that a few days before the assignment. Then I'd like to see those two people meet at the library. The library's got a, a phenomenal open plan space, as you all know, um, or any classroom, JG 342, it's available, or any of the cafeterias. You meet with your buddy and you go over the notes. He 
each other's notes. And you discuss what the other person has done and agree and disagree. So you, you probably will both have similar answers for most of the questions, but there will be points where you say, well, I don't think your approach there was right. Or you shouldn't have used that viscosity, you should have used the blended viscosity of the liquid and gas mixture. And you, you, you talk about each other's work. So you explain your mistake, or the other person explains why you made a mistake. And then the other person will hear a second opinion, not just from me, but now from your body as well. That's the intention of group work. It's not that um, you take those solutions that I've mentioned out here. What's not appropriate is Sarah decides to do question one and two, and Brad does question three, because question three is, is a bigger question. And then they do it separately, combine the two pieces of work and then hand that in. Sarah hasn't then seen what Brad's done in question three and vice versa. So, so that's no good. Um, but there will be a whole chunk of you that do that. Okay? I have seen that in the past. It's obvious because I get solutions in one font and solutions in another font. One solution is on line paper and pencil, the other one's printed out on the computer and they just save it together and hand it in. You'll still all get the grade, but you're, you're shortchanging yourself. So what I do want to see is where you've gone through the work together with each other and you then write up a joint solution after that. But at least in this instance, both people have done all the work and have learned from each other. And they've had a chance to review each other's work. That's the intention of group work. When I worked at GlaxoSmithKline, there was not a single instance where I would submit a document um, for uh, regulatory approval. So I worked in a, in a highly regulated industry where there was FDA or Health Canada oversight on everything we did. So there was no way that I would write a document mm -hmm. and that goes into the company's data system and that's where, for example, FDA takes a look at. Those documents are screened by my manager and three other people and they're iterated on until everyone is happy with them. Uh, and that document wasn't written by myself, it was written with me and maybe two other engineers. So that's an example in a highly regulated industry, but even if you weren't in a regulated industry, like oil and gas, where there tends to be less government oversight, you will still be working on these things with your colleagues because these outcomes from your work that you do are in the millions of dollars on a daily basis uh, impact. So there's never a moment where you just do something yourself, hand it in, and that goes, goes on. Please, please try to, um, at this stage of your career, really learn a bit about group work and, and, and take advantage of the learning from each other. Because that's, that's an important skill we want to teach graduates from that class. Any, any questions on group work? Any, any concerns that you might have? It is optional. If you choose to work on your own, that's quite okay. And I know about a third of you will tend to do that, and two thirds of the class will tend to work in groups based on my previous experience with this. Uh, but I, I do encourage the group work. It's not there to make less work for the TA, um, though that's a, a nice side effect, but it is there for uh, for your benefit to learn as well. That's the main. That's the main. Okay. So now for me speaking for today, what I would like you to do is. Um, Form groups of three or four, so stand up, maybe talk to the people in the row behind you or the row in front of you if necessary to form your group. I'm going to hand out a piece of paper here where I'd like you to, um, we're going to just do a little, a little exercise where you identify separation units, as many as you can. Let's take this to go through it. So A. Uh, absorption. Absorption, sweet. B. That's a little too general. B. Boiling, bag filter, and say be creative, use hyphens. Uh, C. Centrifuge. There's a lot of C. Centrifuge, chromatography, condensation. clarifier, condensation, I don't know if that's a yeah. Crystallization. It's a lot of C. D's. Distillation. Distillation, of course. Anything else? Sorry? Filtration, drying, dialysis, E, evaporation, evaporation, anything else? F, filtration is an easy one, flash, flotation, G, grinding, separation, 